Hi, my name is Kareem Ahmed, and I'm a sophomore undergraduate researcher in the laboratory of Dr. Patricia Clark in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at the University of Notre Dame. Today, I'm going to describe an article published by the journal of Physically, Physical Chemistry Letters by Professor Clark and Essel Brasselman, a graduate student in Dr. Clark's lab. Proteins are linear polymers that do a large amount of the work needed for a cell to function. Fifty years ago, Christian Anfensen discovered that a protein's native structure is determined solely by the order of amino acid residues in the protein sequence. Interactions between amino acid residues produce regular structural features like alpha helices and beta sheets, leading to more complex structures called tertiary and even more complex quaternary structures. But how does a protein find its one correct native conformation from the enormous number of possible conformations? Since Anfensen's discoveries, a lot of progress has been made towards understanding how proteins fold, mainly by systematically studying how full-length proteins refold when they are diluted out of a chemical denatured into a buffer similar to the one inside a cell. But in nature, proteins don't fold in dilute buffer systems. The interior of the cell is crowded with macromolecules, and yet, most proteins fold much more efficiently in this environment than they do in a test tube. The increased efficiency of protein folding in the cell implies that when we take proteins away from their cellular environment, we lose something that contributes to productive protein folding. One key difference between protein folding in the cell and the test tube is a phenomenon of vectorial folding. In the cell, proteins can start to fold from one end to the other, for example, during protein synthesis, or when an unfolded protein is threaded across a membrane before it starts to fold. In the article, Dr. Clark and Esther describe how vectorial folding contributes to the efficient production of a class of proteins called autotransporter proteins. Autotransporters are virulence proteins that are secreted to the outside surface of bacterial cells that cause devastating human diseases including cholera, dysentery, bubonic plague, and bacterial meningitis. A few years ago, the lab showed that one end of autotransporter proteins called a C-terminus emerges first across the outer membrane and this end begins to fold independent of the other end terminal end. However, it was unclear how autotransporter proteins were secreted efficiently across this membrane. What provided the driving force for secretion? One hypothesis tested by the Clark lab is that the free energy released upon autotransporter protein folding can be used as the driving force for efficient secretion. Interestingly, the Clark lab discovered that two autotransporter proteins have an unusual anisotropic distribution of stability. The C termini of these proteins, shown in blue, is the end that crosses the outer membrane first and is significantly more stable than the other end terminal end, shown in red. In this analogy, the protein is secreted efficiently when the C terminal stable side goes down in this model and is less stable when the end terminal side goes up. In this model, this is secretion and this is inefficient secretion. The autotransporter folding drive secretion, we would expect that altering this anisotropic distribution of stability would alter the efficiency of autotransporter secretion across the outer membrane. This is indeed what was observed. When the C-terminal end of one of these autotransporter proteins is destabilized, or this end goes up, or the end terminal end is stabilized, this end going down, we reduce secretion efficiency. Conversely, destabilizing the end terminal end increased outer membrane secretion efficiency. In conclusion, we've shown that in the cell, autotransporter protein secretion exploits a unique balance of stability at the N-terminal and C-terminal ends of the protein. As we learn more about this large family of proteins, it will be interesting to test whether we can use this knowledge to develop novel drugs that exploit the distribution of stability in the autotransporter proteins to combat the deadly bacteria that rely on them.